What can you do when brand new tubes are inserted in your fluorescent fixture and they don't work? This fluorescent fixture is installed in the suspended ceiling over my office computer. I began to notice that I did not seem to have as much light as I once did. Dropped the panel and observed that two of my fluorescent tubes were not functioning. I got two new tubes, put them in, they still weren't functioning. The obvious conclusion then is that the tubes are fine but the ballasts, which are the black boxes that you see in this picture that cause the fluorescent tubes to start up, that at least one of them was not functioning anymore. In order to attain access to the ballasts, there is a sheet metal cover that is merely clamped into place. It is flexible and you can push on it and remove it in order to drop the cover away. This is what the old style ballast looks like. For a four tube fixture, which I have, there will be two ballasts. Each ballast controls a different two tube bank of lights. And each ballast will have a total of eight wires. There will be two yellow wires, two red wires, two blue wires, and a white and black wire. Each ballast is secured to the sheet metal by sliding underneath tabs on the left and one sheet metal screw with a washer on the right. These are old style ballasts and do have the potential to leak fluids over time and are substantially larger than the new replacements which I ordered. They are electronic in nature. Warning, 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 danger, Will Robinson, danger. Let me emphasize that before I began to do this work that you are about to see, I turned off power to the fluorescent fixture at the circuit breaker in the box and verified that it was off. This required that I bring an alternate light source into the room, but do not think for a moment that you can just turn power off at the switch and work safely. Most switches operate by stopping the neutral side and the power side of the circuit will continue to be live. You must turn off power at the breaker. Now you see the replacement ballast put into place and the old ballast still connected but hanging. The new electronic units are dramatically different in size. There are a bunch of wires up there, and in order not to become confused, I decided to place the new ballast in place and then leave the old ballast suspended by the existing wiring, then connect the wires one at a time. It's pretty easy to match things up in that fashion. At the ends of the fluorescent fixture, the wires disappear into a channel and go to the fluorescent tube connectors. I don't think you're going to want to try and wire directly into those channels. So the way that I chose to make these connections is by clipping the existing wiring and then using wire nuts to connect the new ballast. It works perfectly. Here are all the tools that you will need. A Phillips head screwdriver, 
lineman's pliers for cutting the wires and wire strippers. Notice that the wire nuts that I have are the small gray ones. You'll need probably around 16 of these. And here we are with the first ballast wired into place. You'll see if you look closely a number of small gray wire nuts making the connections and that's all that's necessary now that uh, that has been wired in the old ballast has been dropped away as it was incrementally cut out of the circuits. Now we're on to the replacement of the second ballast. Now, two of my fluorescent tubes were operating properly, so it's quite conceivable that I could have replaced only one of these ballasts and made my fix. However, as I went to a new style of electronic ballast, and there might be some quick start and possibly some economical advantages, I elected to replace both ballasts. Using the same system as the first, I dropped the old ballast, leaving it still connected to its eight various wires, screwed the new ballast up to the top of the fluorescent fixture, then one by one clipped and spliced the wires using the gray wire nuts. The second ballast is partially installed here. All of the wiring connections are made now and all that is remaining to be done is to tuck the wires up underneath the U-shaped cover plate and clamp that cover plate into place. Here we are with the cover plate reattached and all four tubes working properly. Job was a success. There was no need to reconfigure any wiring. The system of doing it one wire at a time moving from the old to the new worked very well. No confusion factors. Re-emphasizing, do not attempt this job without cutting power off at the circuit breaker. Finally, this is what I bought. Two of these electronic ballasts through Amazon at a cost of around $20 each shipped. They worked perfectly. All of the wiring codes were the same and they will fit uh, a standard 40 watt or 34 watt F40 or F34 fluorescent tube. This was a fairly straightforward process and you should not have any difficulty if you've done any basic wiring at all. I hope this video was useful to you.